welcome to Embrace the Film. Today we are taking a look at the film Veronica that just recently hit Netflix. This is a Spanish film starring Sandra Escasina, Anna Torrent, and Leticia Dallara and was directed by Paco Plaza. The film, set in Madrid in 1991, focuses on a young girl who is descended upon by an evil force after holding a seance at school with her friends. Now, before I begin, I should mention a few things about my experience with this film before I sat down to watch it for myself. Originally, when it first popped up on Netflix, I instinctively tossed it into my list with no intention of watching it anytime soon. Then, a buddy of mine from work told me about it and how he thought it wasn't all that great. Not that it was a bad film, but that it wasn't very scary. Then, not 10 minutes later, a friend tagged me in one of those daily facts posts on Facebook about the film. It read as follows. Netflix released a new horror film, Veronica, and it is said to be the scariest film ever made. It is based on an absolute real story. Even science is unable to explain the deaths in this film. Netflix said only one out of a hundred people are able to watch the full film. Experts are suggesting that it can kill weak-hearted people. Now, after reading that, I'm sure you can understand my need to watch this one at the first opportunity. I was presented with two very conflicting views on this one particular film, and let's just say my curiosity was far more than piqued. From here on out, this review will contain spoilers, so this is your warning. If you intend to see this film for yourself, tread no further. First of all, my work friend was right. This film is not very scary at all. It was packed to the brim with things we have seen before, many of which come straight out of the Conjuring films, most notably the shadow moving around the walls effect. Secondly, that fact post lied about one thing for sure. Only one person dies in this entire film, and it is relatively unexplained, I suppose. I'm honestly not sure how anyone could find this film very scary, Unless maybe you don't ever watch horror films and just up and decided that this was going to be your first try into the genre. So my verdict on the fact post was that it was just a sad, cheap attempt to get people to watch this film, which obviously will work, but will also leave a lot of people very sorely disappointed. That being said, this film is actually very good, despite my being lied to. It opens with a very strong hook that definitely grabs you and sets you up with a want to know more and a powerful feeling of dread. Throughout the entire film, the filmmakers build the tension very well, setting up and paying off scares well, not really using jump scare tactics at all, at least not that I noticed, which was a huge plus for me. I feel like the jump scare tactic is just a cheap trick and is overused to the extreme these days. The film had some very creepy imagery used pretty effectively, such as the body-shaped black stains on the mattresses, the dark figure in the TV reflection that goes unnoticed by the lead character, and the use of the eclipse during the seance sequence. The acting in this film was pretty great for a horror film. Nothing felt overacted or cheap in any way. Sandra Escasina did a fantastic job as the title character, delivering a very believable performance as this young girl being forced into adulthood and portraying the outside stress of this supernatural force weighing on her. The cinematography and editing in this one were fantastic. They employed a lot of long shots, which I enjoyed very much, and great camera work that delivered beautiful sequences. There was one in particular that I found absolutely phenomenal. There's this moment when Veronica is walking toward frame through an active area outside. She is moving towards us in real time while everyone around her is moving in reverse. Just as she reaches frame, we see a mirror image of her walking into frame moving the opposite direction. She turns and looks at it and then turns back towards the camera, but as she turns back, it begins to turn to look at her. But the mirror image is kept out of focus and just creates a fantastic foreshadowing moment for the big reveal at the end, which sadly wasn't too big of a reveal. In fact, the ending was a bit disappointing, in my opinion, considering they tell you at least a few times throughout various sequences in the film what the ending is going to be. So if you know what to look for, you're going to see it coming. This film featured a very great synth score that fit the tone of the piece very well, playing on the very strong nostalgia factor that has been prominent recently, and even went so far as to use the infamous Albertus font for some of the titles that John Carpenter always makes use of in his films. 
I personally love this factor because most of my favorite films are from the 70s and 80s. Overall, I thought this was a very solid film that does deserve some attention. I enjoyed this one a lot and I think a lot of horror fans will, especially those who enjoy any occult aesthetic. I'm gonna give Veronica a B. On its own, this one is a strong genre piece that could hold its own amongst other films like it. Sure, it isn't what I was hoping for going in, but I think it's worth a watch, especially since many of us have easy access to it on Netflix. Quiere hacernos daño. Pero quién? No lo sé. Tú también notaste algo. Porque yo de lo que no te despides se queda contigo. If you enjoyed today's segment, feel free to click that sub button to stay up to date on all my latest reviews. Click that little bell to be notified on all future uploads. If you'd like to show your support for Embrace the Film, consider becoming a patron. For as little as $1 a month, you can help me produce more content each week. If you have any suggestions for the show, or for films you would enjoy seeing reviewed, or if you have a short film that you would like me to review, feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to drop a like, and I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching.